So welcome everyone to this special press conference to, uh, to mark World AIDS Day organized by AIDS Society of India, which is uh, ASI, the pan-India national network of uh, HIV experts and scientists in the country. And uh, we have uh, eminent experts <laughs> from the field of HIV today. They will be sharing their insights. Uh, as we know that uh, governments are committed to end AIDS by 2030. Now, 121 months are left. And uh, this year, 2020, has been very difficult for uh, health security for everyone. And probably this year, there's no need to re-emphasize how important health for all is due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So let us hear from the, uh, from the from our experts. Today, this session will be co-chaired by Dr. Ishwar Gelada, who was among the first doctors who began HIV care in the country. He's also the president of AIDS Society of India and was elected to the governing council of International AIDS Society. And um, Dr. Naresh Goel. Dr. Naresh Goel is the Deputy Director General of National AIDS Control Organization, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Government of India, and a noted by uh, not only a medical doctor and a public health expert, but who has played a key role in shaping HIV response in the country. As well as we have a very eminent panel of experts from uh, all across the country, as well as I see some names uh, who has been supporting ASI from uh, other nations as well. So uh, without any further do I will hand over to the co-chairs, Dr. Ishwar Gelada and Dr. Naresh Goel. Over to you, sirs. Uh, thank you very much, Bobby, uh, to organize this event at a very short notice. I think it is less than 24 hours. Uh, see, all over the world, people are talking only COVID and we call it COVID mania. What we have seen, uh, the impact of COVID on non-COVID diseases, uh, very much pertinent is also on the HIV and tuberculosis. So, we, we find that uh, uh, currently a lot of such uh, national programs or the care programs are alienated or being neglected. And we would like to, uh, this kind of day, World AIDS Day, <coughs> or day these are the days to bring back glory of, to this uh, subject. And I think this is one such effort. Number two, uh, though we see that the entire world is engrossed with uh, uh, COVID pandemic and so many million people are infected, but if you look at the deaths which are occurred, they are 140,000 something. And if you have seen the deaths occurred because of HIV AIDS in last so many years, they are more than 34 million. So actually, even if you talk about death, you talk about suffering, you talk about anything, HIV is no lower uh, ranking disease uh, from the point of your attention, which is required. Now, uh, we have seen during the lockdown period, NACO had taken a proactive role <coughs> that the medicines or ART reaches every HIV positive person, whether that person is accessing government setup or private setup. And they made that proactive effort, which is not seen in usually other setups uh, in government. So I think I commend uh, NACO for doing that. Uh, that is the precise reason that uh, uh, despite lockdown, most of the people with HIV, they could procure their medicine. Yes, there are some uh, maybe 10, 15 percent people who could not get medicine. There was a disruption. Uh, courier system was not working. Our, uh, our speed post was taking 15, 20 days time to reach there. But how some of, some of people manage. Uh, second thing uh, about NACO and especially Dr. Naresh Goel, uh, we are making efforts for last 10 years to see that NACO and ASI work together hand in hand. But in reality, it started happening after Dr. R.S. Gupta and Dr. Naresh Goel took over. So you can find, even on a lot of national committees, experts from uh, ASI, they are there. We are uh, sharing a lot of our expertise with each other. And for every conference, every meeting, every CME of ASI, NACO is our partner. So I think this is one of the great, great scene. And commensurate with the current uh, uh, theme, that is a global responsibility and shared responsibilities. So let us share together. Uh, there are other panelists who are going to put their point of view, but I request Dr. Uh, Goel, who is my co-chair, to put NACO point of view at this time. Thank you. Thank you, <coughs> Dr. Ishwar, for saying such good words for NACO and the whole uh, National AIDS Control Program that uh, you know Government of India is uh, organizing. In fact, it has always been an effort, and uh, we want to see to it that. Uh, Together, like the private practitioners and the uh, 
you know, government program people, service providers at the government setups, they work hand in hand. And uh, as you rightly said, during COVID, this is the time of COVID-19 and without, uh, you know, touching that subject, uh, nothing will be complete. During COVID-19, initially, you know, it appeared that how this will be mitigated, how the issues that will come will be resolved. But with a big co uh, cooperation from the NGOs, with, the, with a big cooperation from the communities themselves, and with all of you, we have been able to do what we thought was impossible at one point of time. In fact, uh, uh, as you might uh, recollect, <clears throat> recall, you know, our discussion that even in private practice, what uh, who, whosoever has got stuck wherever during lockdown will be provided medicine from the AIT center and that kind of circulars and <clears throat> messages were sent all across India. In fact, some of the foreigners who, were, who got stuck, they were also even provided the medicines of their regimen, whatever they were taking from nearby centers. So that was one good thing that happened uh, because uh, the intentions were good and uh, we all, both, uh, I mean, wanted that uh, nobody should uh, be deprived of the medicines at that point of time. And that was the priority, you know, to make the medicines reach their house by through outreach workers, through NGOs, CBOs, and uh, Alliance India also played a major role during that time. That's one thing. Second is this, uh, you know, issue of global solidarity and uh, shared responsibility, which is UNAID's theme. In fact, the themes are also slightly different. One is for UNAIDS and another is WHO. WHO theme is global solidarity and uh, resilient uh, services. So talking of, uh, you know, global solidarity, yes, it has to be there. Everybody has to support in whatever manner they can support. So time to time, you know, kind of guidelines or uh, uh, other support that uh, global community is providing to us, it's most welcome and uh, partners are always there to support, whether it is UNHC, the WHO, US, USAID and all other partners are there to support us and uh, we welcome their support in the government and uh, continuously work with them to see to it that uh, benefits are passed to the beneficiaries. The shared responsibility is becoming, you know, more and more important in the context that uh, if... Uh, ये हिंदी में बोले तो मेरी जिम्मेदारी मेरी जिम्मेदारी मतलब कि मेरे को जो है जिम्मेदार लेना है चाहे वो हेल्थ केयर वर्कर है हमारे एआरटी सेंटर का काउंसलर है चाहे वो आईसीटीसी का लैब टेक्नीशियन है चाहे वो डॉक्टर है चाहे वो स्टाफ नर्स है हर किसी को अपना अपना जो है रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी को समझना है कि ये मेरी जिम्मेदारी है कि मैंने एच आई को कैसे खत्म करना है तो ये जो चीजें हैं शेयर रेस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी की ये हमें करनी है और मूविंग टुवर्ड रिजिलियंट सर्विसेज डब्ल्यू ने जो साथ में रखा है वो भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट है कि हमारी सर्विसेज डिसरप्ट नो वी हैव टू मेक आवर सिस्टम सो स्ट्रॉन्ग दैट इट शुड दे शुड नॉट बी पर्सन स्पेसिफिक सो uh in that light uh, we are working together and uh, we will work more dr gilada has said like few last few years we started working but now we want to you know uh, make it a more formal relationship uh, by constituting a group for pub, uh, you know this uh, public private partnership and uh, we will see soon that uh, how you know more and more partnership is developed more and more collaboration collaboration is developed with these words, uh, uh, whenever there is any issue, uh, I'll be sitting throughout the, you know, this uh, uh, interaction and uh, ready to, you know, take up. Uh, Glada has already told me there's going to be bombardment of questions, so no issues. We are there to, and we together will be able to resolve it. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, as you said that during the lockdown, I'm talking about uh, early, uh, early April and late March. So, speak of lockdown, they may have provided even uh, private practitioners patients without registering them at ART centers. So, there was no compulsion on them to register the ART center. All the ART centers were told, try to give them matching ART. If something is not available, ask the doctor what kind of ART can be given, replace. And I, during those days, I got call from Uttarakhand and Himachal and everywhere. So, I really appreciate that proactive efforts made by NACO. Secondly, we have seen and we are still seeing in Maharashtra, a lot of government offices are still not functional fully. They are functioning with 15-20% staff. And NACO, even during that uh, strictest lockdown, was working, working with a full-fledged uh, system. So I think 
uh, all these things are really appreciable uh, for NECO, and that's the precise reason that we are not going to develop a lot of resistance in uh, people living with HIV despite lockdown and despite uh, a lot of hardships. Uh, now, uh, we'll start one by one. And I, I request all of you to make your succinct point just in two to three minutes, because there are a lot of journalists and they would like to ask questions. I start with Ruby, just uh, in two minutes, Ruby. Unmute, unmute yourself. Unmute. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Gilada. Thank you, uh, like all the media person and Dr. Naresh. Yes, uh, definitely it is a difficult time and we all are facing the problems. Everyone is uh, stuck. But uh, as Dr. Gilada told, and definitely we appreciate the effort of the our uh, uh, like uh, national program, which, were, which was very helpful. And especially when I am witnessed, I send many patients to ART center to collect the medicines and they got the medicines timely. And even they are giving the medicine uh, three months uh, like uh, reserve or something to the patients. So this is very good. And what about the, this uh, uh, task which we need to complete is in 1990. We definitely need to work hard and all if uh, all the public and private sector will work together, then only it will be able to successful. And we have discussed many times the model of uh, TB program, which uh, we have personally discussed. I mean, I visited multiple times to the NACO also. Uh, so it is the wonderful model which is working and they are also thinking uh, to replicate some sort of only thing problem is the confidentiality, which is a hurdle uh, in this uh, model, basically, because which we cannot replicate as of now, uh, exactly like the tuberculosis program. But many things, every patient, and they have make it uh, very clearly, every tubercular patient will be tested for the HIV, and every HIV patient will be tested for the tuberculosis. So this is, they will go hand in hand. And we all have to definitely share the each and uh, everyone have to uh, be responsible. That is a theme, everyone. So I think the testing is very important. Basically, which we are seeing even in the COVID, if you don't test, you don't uh, know whether you are suffering or not. And there are a lot of asymptomatic patients who are transferring this disease, this COVID-19. So same is HIV. If we don't test, and uh, it can be transferred to the many people. So testing is very important. Test and treat uh, approach is the wonderful approach. And together, we can, I think, uh, if we will work together, we will be able to achieve this uh, 1990. And as a UP, I belong from the Gazeba, so UP is a definitely a low risk, low prevalent, but highly vulnerable uh, state, basically because and especially Delhi and Sia, as it is a lot of uh, migratory population is there. So it is a very high risk and uh, definitely we are seeing a lot of patients of HIV and together we will be able to control. So thank you. Well, thank you, Ruby, and uh, for your nice comments. And uh, <clears throat> again, I'll say that uh, the me, you know, this interaction is not for appreciating NACO, but yes, thing, thing, since things have come out, you people are, you know, telling this multi-month dispensation, yes, three months, you know, we made it a point that people have to travel less, so that they get three months medicine in one go. I'll request now Dr. Rajiv Jirajani to, uh, you know, put up uh, his remarks uh, Good afternoon and thank you for inviting me. Dr. Goel, we go far back in time and association in different, different ways. Um, I agree that the task which we felt was relatively achievable. To my mind, it has become a little more difficult. The question is that it is the lockdown and the mental health issues associated and the non-compliance or non-adherence of taking medications in itself is going to be a big complication. However, it is still that we have time and if we have gone off the track, it is time that we should all wake up and come back into a very active phase where we will need more and more efforts by everyone. In view of COVID, as Dr. Gilada began, that the death rate is much less. There is a distinct difference between two, I write. 
these both particles are different, the mechanism is different, and therefore our approach for COVID patient is also without discriminating our patient. The healthcare should be available to all of us. We are making, I understand that there were certain hurdles in getting the access to the medicines. Yes, at least in the city of Bombay and Maharashtra, there were number of people who had called up. And subsequently, I would give them direction. I was associated with LNT ART Center, and they would be nice to oblige. But we do face a challenge. The priority list, what was there for HIV disease, is a little bit deviated in the last one year, ever since the onslaught of COVID-19. But I think that if we all were and what Dr. Goyal correctly said that, you know, it is all responsibility is a basic business model that if everybody does what they are expected to, the total outcome will be definitely better. So thank you very much for, I would take any questions as and when it happens. Yes, sir. Dr. Prakash Bora, who has been uh, with the Godrej Hospital as a consultant. And he also runs an NGO, and he has been part of the uh, Aid Society of India as his governing council member. Prakash, please. please unmute yourself and start. Prakash, unmute, unmute. Prakash, unmute, unmute yourself, Prakash. We can't hear you. Ah, yes. That. Now, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I am Dr. Prakash Bora. What I feel is that a shared responsibility means there should be uh, absolute cooperation between all the medical branches, whether it is medicine, whether it is surgery, gynae, pediatric, psychiatry, and all those are needed. And I think there is subtle discrimination in that, and that is that needs to be removed. And secondly, there has to be a relation, a correlation between the NGOs, between the healthcare workers patients themselves and the uh, government machinery. And all these four things, if they come together and work together with the shared responsibility, I think the uh, problems will be solved. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, now I will invite Dr. Jyoti Dhar from UK to say her comments. Um, <clears throat> thanks, thanks for asking me to speak. I mean, I'm not part of the the thing, but anyway, for me, what no, has you been are part the, of the thing? Uh, anyway, you are one hundred percent part of the thing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, for me, what has been the most touching and the most incredible experience, and I feel very, very proud to say that um, you know. Um, that we have we have experienced is that humanity, human beings have come together in in such an amazing uh, manner that it's been unprecedented. It's something that even at the height of the HIV epidemic we never saw it, and uh, I think um, and it was really really a pleasure to hear you say, uh, Dr. Goel, that. Um, you know, we need to improve on the partnership. Uh, and this is something that having been a member of ASICON for several years, um, that it, it's, it's like music to my ears. It's absolute music to my ears that uh, finally uh, we've, you know, those barriers that have existed for years and years and years have, have come down and we all are looking forward to working together for a better individual, for a better community, for better healthcare staff. It's not just individuals. And COVID, unsurprisingly, has, has broken all those barriers, which HIV was never able to, to break. 
And for me, that experience has been tremendous, absolutely tremendous. No distinction of race, creed, sex, caste, ethnicity, um, you know, has been seen globally. And I think COVID has taught us what HIV never was, wasn't able to teach us. I mean, we, uh, you know, that the stigma and so it's been an absolutely, you know, amazing that we've been alive to, to watch this happening. That's all I can say. So therefore, you know, it was music to my ears, at least when I, when you, when what you talked and said that um, we really need to build those bridges where we provide a better healthcare. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank, thank you for giving you. me the opportunity. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Jyoti. And uh, when it is music to your ears, definitely it's music to our ears also. So it has to be music to everyone's ears. Good that uh, you, you know, are feeling so happy. And uh, we will definitely do it. And we are in a position right now to definitely go with a, you know, not incremental increase, but uh, we can say, you know, geometric progression or exponential even if possible. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Jyoti there. And I'd like to invite Dr. Kumara Swami now, uh, who, you know, Secretary General of ASI and everybody knows uh, uh, <coughs> him. So I need not introduce and say much about him. Dr. Kumara Swami, please. Thank you, Naresh, uh, uh, for uh, inviting me to do this uh, brief chat. Uh, and uh, respected uh, press members, you know, thank you for being with us. Uh, so, so this is a time now we have 38 million people living with HIV till the end of uh, 2019 globally. And as you all know that among those, 2.35 million people are living in our own country of India. And among them, 1.34 million are already receiving antiretroviral treatment thanks to their efforts by our national government through NACO and also through our own you know, private colleagues. But one good thing United Nations has just released um, um, you know, a couple of days back is there is a 29% decline in AIDS-related deaths and 66% decline in new HIV infections in India. So this we need to applaud. So this is something what we have never seen last year or the previous year, but we need to give the highest appreciation regards to our national government, you know, which NACO has taken a lead to implementing antiretroviral therapy program and make sure that every person living with HIV have access to treatment. Not just the NACO alone, you know, all the private practitioners who are taking care of people have chipped in appropriately to make sure that they all receive the appropriate care. So this is possible, but today, the theme of today's World AIDS Day uh, 2020 observance is global solidarity to end uh, this pandemic. You all hear from my colleagues that how this COVID-19 have disrupted. I echo all everyone's uh, sentiments, but I will add little more, you know, at the end of my, you know, brief chat, maybe in the next couple of uh, uh, seconds. So today, when we talk about ending uh, the HIV AIDS epidemic, that means, 100% of the people living with HIV must know their status. 100% of them should be on the life-saving antiretroviral treatment. Now we have wonderful such medications available, thanks to science and thanks to innovations. And 100% of them should be virally suppressed. So here everyone, not just doctors, nurses, counselors, community, we need commitments from patients so that they're all virologically suppressed. If we can do that, we can achieve zero new transmission which is possible and feasible, and we are able to deliver then the promise of ending AIDS, which is a theme and where we need the global solidarity. So today, HIV and AIDS, we all know that it's yet another chronic manageable diseases if you know your status. Now for that get tested, we have excellent life-saving antiretroviral therapy and also a lot of newer drugs available. Don't worry, they don't need to take every day. Now newer interventions coming up where you can have a single shot for every two months, or there are signs now happening how you can keep an implant where drugs will be available for six months. These are something going to be available. If we make sure that our people living with HIV live healthily now with the current medication, we can provide all those new innovations so that they live like a normal people. 
Also, today we have antiretroviral drugs available to prevent HIV. We call it as pre-exposure prophylaxis. So we do have drugs where people have to take every day. But on the other hand, based on a very newer science, very recently been reported from studies done across the globe, by giving an injection in the form of an antiretroviral drug every two months, where we'll be able to prevent uh, transmission. So that means we have got newer tools available, newer signs available. We need to work together how we can make this available to our community so that we can prevent transmission so that we can end this HIV AIDS epidemic. It will be unfair if you don't touch on COVID. You know, today, a lot of my life in taking care of patients with COVID has been moving from HIV to COVID because of this pandemic uh, here in Chennai, in my own city. This completely disrupted our HIV care. We worked very hard to make sure that the continuum of HIV care and success what we have achieved by managing this patient persist. We did all the efforts. You heard from all my key colleagues how we did that by sending couriers, by putting antiretroviral medications, moving to the post office to deliver medications, sending through the community. We all did that. We know that today, COVID-19 do not cause major disease progression in people living with HIV if they are taking antiretroviral drug, if their CD4 cell count is good. But on the other hand, if they're not taking the drug because of the disruption caused by COVID, they can cause disease progression. Before I end my brief chat, we have to do a lot in terms of research. There are newer antiretroviral drugs coming up. We need to work together to evaluate them so that our communities are safer, they live healthily. Also now, we have an added co-enemy, that is COVID-19. There are a lot of robust research happening to find drugs for COVID-19. We need to study them, whether that will be suitable for our people living with HIV, whether that will have interactions with our current wonderful antiretroviral medications. You all know that we have now COVID-19 vaccine going to be available soon. Whether that can be given to our HIV infected people, whether that will develop immune response, that will develop antibodies so that they will also be protective. So these are some of those newer research we need to carry out to do this. I think we need global solidarity. We all need to work together. Thank you so much. Uh, now I request uh, Dr. William Bushundi, who is also governing council member of AIDS Society of India. And he runs the Central India Institute of Infectious Diseases and currently also involved with uh, COVID mitigation efforts. William, please. Please unmute yourself and start. Thank you, Dr. Gilada. Uh, I'm basically coming from Central India, that is from Nagpur. And I was uh, I am catering basically for the North Telangana, the uh, Western uh, Chhattisgarh and the South uh, Madhya Pradesh as well as whole of Hyderabad. I really had a lot of problems uh, delivering the medicines to our HIV positive patients who are from the rural and uh, the very remotest areas uh, where nothing was possible. But hats off to the speed post, uh, which one of my single uh, tweet on the Twitter handle of Honorable Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad. I literally was called by the Speed Post people and they have helped me a lot in delivering this. But at the same time, in the same go, I want to say that one thing, that COVID has taught us one thing, that is still we are lacking about the infrastructure and health facilities in the remotest as well as the rural area of India. We have to strengthen that because whatever I've seen, uh, and rightly pointed out by uh, Dr. Kumar, that yes, we are doing a lot of research, we are doing a lot of science, but at the same time, we have to go to the grassroots level and find out. Because uh, as per my knowledge, around 21% of the individuals all over the world, they don't know about their, their status at all, in spite of we are having such a large number of paraphernalia of the uh, newer tests as well as the drugs. COVID HIV combination, initially when it was a strict lockdown, we had definitely very low cases of COVID uh, infections in HIV. Uh, that time uh, there was a discussion that can it be because of the HIV which is giving some uh, protective uh, drugs uh, that is going giving any protective effect, but no, just after the lockdown uh, has stopped, we had definitely more number of HIV positive COVID patients, but fortunately the outcome of COVID in HIV positive is same as that of a non-HIV if he's virologically as well as immunologically better. The second point which I would like to say is 
uh, with new advent of prep properly used it will be really fantastic to achieve the target of 1990 90 third thing i will appreciate the cbo here in central india who has helped me not only in uh, distributing or the, the the delivering the medicines but we know that this my cbo is basically catering for the minor sexual minority as well as fsw where they were facing a lot of problems because of the the financial burden and with the help of this cbos and ngos we could provide them as much as possible help so hats off to, to my boys from cbos and the ngo the uh, plhiv ngo as well as the cbo and the last but not the least global solidarity is must but shared and local responsibility will be making us to take to the our main aim that is no infections no deaths no stigma thank you very much uh, thank you murushundi ji and uh, for your you know very very relevant and to the point comments um, with that i'll invite dr ganga khedkar i think everybody knows him he was a face of uh, you know this covid 19 pandemic when it started uh, he is retired from icmr but uh, you know like uh, some people you know never retire so ganga khedkar is one of them so i request you sir dr raman ganga khedkar to please share your thoughts on this occasion thank you sir uh, well, the slogan meant something different to me you no know, when we said global solidarity and shared responsibility no actually if you look at what was hiv programming hiv programming can be written in this to in this one line itself there was global solidarity there was shared responsibility by the community and that's what essentially we should be pointing out at this point in time now what is also important to recognize that this was perhaps hiv was perhaps one of those only only viral infections which never had cure or vaccine was on the cusp of going for elimination by 2030 as a goal as strongly as one could imagine and that was mainly because we had governmental support in india you find that national aids control organization worked really well with the community the stand out of this entire approach has been the community involvement which was sought and given by the community uh, by itself now when you look at this particular issue you know one must realize that even in the lockdown the treatment related services went on um, really well and the reason was also partly not only the government delivering the same but also that the community participated and tried to provide the uh, medicines to the patients whom all of them knew but there is one thing which is a major fear to my mind now you find that in this covid era you know this particular covid 19 in itself will be a competing priority in the minds of all those who are vulnerable towards hiv you know perhaps they might give far more priority towards covid and then the access to preventive services is one thing which may we may have to prioritize very strongly if at all if we are to reach towards the just achievable you no know, we would have had achieved by 2030 the elimination goal itself now when it comes to shared responsibility one of the things which which is a shared responsibility of all of us is to translate what we learned in hiv programming as successful best practices and give them towards covid 19 if we are able to do that whether it is for community involvement how did we mobilize the community how did we even follow you no know, to me you no know, going we, this particular covid 19 appropriate behaviors were far simpler to be handled compared to use of <coughs> condoms by different sub populations but that was all manageable the sole reason is we handled it really well the community was involved really well 
I think shared responsibility of all of us is to share our own experiences and try to try to modify or develop certain strategies which will help even in COVID uh, programming. What we must also remember that today the compartments in which we tend to speak as diseases and then have vertical programs, those have lost a lot of meaning. Perhaps COVID is going to teach just one thing if we want a control for covid we also have to look at hiv we have to look at tb we have to look at malaria all these have elimination targets by 2030 so let us dissolve those compartments let's work towards health of all and if it is health of all we need to translate what we learned in hiv programming on community involvement, on ensuring that community participates in every activity related to their own health, and then perhaps see a better, better India, better world. Uh, that's essentially what I feel. Thank you. I would now like to request uh, Dr. Sajid Kumar, uh, who has been also governing council member of ASI and currently working on uh, COVID in Kerala. Uh, if you see a lot of our people uh, who are working in the field of HIV, they're all committed souls. And from one commitment to another commitment, they never say no. And uh, that's what is happening with Dr. Sajid, currently fully busy with COVID. Dr. Sajid, please. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Gilada. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Goyal and my dear friends. Uh, uh, it has been a rather tough time uh, uh, running through the COVID epidemic for the last six months. But this epidemic, as Dr. Ganga has rightly uh, discussed, has told us what shared responsibility really means. Uh, earlier, we used to compartmentalize everything like, you know, this is medicine, that is pulmonology, this is gastroenterology, and things like that. And now uh, it, it has come to the level of uh, real solidarity at the local level and the shared responsibility at the local level. And I would rather say that, you know, this was possible also because we had a good background of HIV trainings that were happening in our country for a long time. Uh, so that there was a lot of responsibility being shared in the management of HIV patients also all throughout the country, irrespective of whether it was a big urban a metropolitan uh, hospital or whether it was a local taluk hospital or even smaller institutions. And I think that experience of uh, being compliant with the directions and, uh, you know, uh, being... Uh, be, being regulated by the national bodies and being organized that, uh, at the local levels had definitely helped us manage the COVID to a large extent. And as far as uh, HIV was concerned, uh, we, we were noticing that uh, all, the, all the precautions that we uh, advocated for uh, COVID was actually preventing uh, transmission of HIV and all other infectious diseases to a large extent. We were seeing less number of uh, bacterial infections. We were seeing less number of fungal infections. We were seeing less number of even road traffic accidents. And that definitely has contributed a lot to the management of all diseases, including HIV. Uh, but uh, it, it, it's, it's a matter of fact that all patients had difficulty in traveling. Uh, you know, in our state, particularly, we were uh, uh, incorporating uh, the telemedicine to a large extent uh, because most of the people had smartphones. So sitting in their homes itself, you know, they could actually perform consultations and the courier service uh, was defective at times, you know, that time, just like uh, Dr. Millins was telling, speed post came to our rescue. And there were many instances where, you know, the, the, the so-called the NGO activities were helping us in large ways by which the patients were transported, not only COVID patients, even HIV patients who had some problems were always transported. But it has been a general observation that you know these patients uh, are doing uh, comparatively better compared to many other patients. And in fact, uh, you know whatever we learned with COVID, uh, if it gets transferred to the field of HIV care and management, uh, because everything happened in a very short span and it was all compressed, but uh, gave us a lot of ideas and a lot of innovations in the field in a very short time. If that can also be translated. I'm sure 2020 and 2030 targets can be achieved very closely. And let us all remember that, you know, working together as a humanity, working together as one of its kind, we'll be able to manage all, all infectious organisms who are going to attack human beings at different times. And this is also the, the major example of, uh, you know, global solidarity. Uh, there is no other disease, perhaps, you know, other than HIV and COVID just, uh, you know, attack the all the nations in the world 
and has shown uh, that humans can stay together and once together we will be able to tackle the situations very well thank you we'll wait for further comments uh, thank you everybody all the panelists have put in uh, their points of view very much pertinent to what is the current scenario and what needs to be done now i request uh, bobby uh, ramakant and uh, shobha shukla to carry on with the media interaction first and then if there are any questions yes sir thank you so much sir and uh, so friends be welcome to share your questions there are some questions which have come in through the ch through the chat personal chat and zoom and also on the facebook stream but uh, if you want to speak or uh, then please raise your virtual hand uh meantime we will begin with some questions here so Do dr gilarda and dr naresh goel uh, i think let us begin with the questions there are a few questions for you both dr gilarda you said about hiv and covid uh, competing um, uh, or overshadowing so uh, there is a question that uh, uh, that hiv is it hiv versus covid or uh, do we need to take care of all the health issues when we talk of health for all and the other question for you sir is about the role of aid society of india during lockdown uh, in ensuring uninterrupted uh, treatment supply you see the first question is uh, because it's a world aids day we are talking about hiv aids if it was world tb day we would have talked about tb but what has happened in the covid era is that most of the non covid infections diseases and services were interrupted whether they are for uh, the delivery of a lady who is a full term or whether they are dialysis whether uh, chemotherapy cancer in tata hospital itself 75% people could not reach tata hospital for chemotherapy so uh, whenever any new problem comes that new problem is over and above the existing problems that problem is not to replace other problems and you try to do that then the other problem will crop up in such a way there are some studies from europe and even uh, from other countries uh, in uh, in us where the death rate of non covid conditions have bypassed the death rate of or deaths of covid so in that kind of scenario we we would like to address covid in a very serious manner but at the same time other diseases cannot be ignored now the role of aid society of india during the covid time is first and foremost important was uh, making a hand in gloves uh, attempt to see that the medicine reaches everybody in the nook and, and corner of the country i will give you a couple of examples nako as i already said you but some people who could uh, dodge the police barricades and come and reach the clinic we requested those patients can you on way back provide medicine to uh, another 8 10 patients and those patients were very uh, kind enough to do that uh, and uh, we provided letters to them that this person requires emergency treatment emergency attendance uh, to attend clinic to attend uh, services and that has been done we also uh, took uh, support of some ngos in different areas and some ngos in uh, wapi and uh, some gujarat part uh, where the uh, they purchased art and provided to the patients so it was something going uh, one one step beyond so that kind of services were provided by people and we try to coordinate from aid society of india uh, everybody from aid society of india whether they are uh, involved in hiv work or hiv and covid both because none of them stop hiv work because of covid and i uh, really commend dr bushundi sajit kumar and other people who have been spending 80% 70% time in covid but they did not neglect their hiv so they were all over work and we have seen our uh, you know, kumar swami the all of us were over work so lot of people who were in lockdown failed that uh, they have nothing to do they are sitting at home we have been working over over time and uh, that's the reason that today we would like to see a better time for hiv is okay that that our 1990 90 target by 2020 is unachievable now because only one month is remaining yeah. and everything uh, whether it is a financial sector medical sector uh, development sector social sector they are all postponed by one year maybe postponed by two years because uh, if, if one year postponement is not that everything is uh, you start immediately from december and everything will be hunky dory it is not going to be so possibly that uh, goal which was set for 2020 can be achieved by 2021 or 2022 and we would like to do every possible way shared or sharing our responsibilities with naco and any governmental agencies like rndcp or central tb division wherever we would like to uh, asi is committed to provide its services its consultancy free of charge whether any state or whether central government whether any local self government any any time they require we are available that's our role 
thank you dr gilada dr nirish goel there are a lot of questions for you now <laughs> not a surprise at all for us so dr goel for first of all there are some questions around the uh, the Uh, the role of the private sector uh, mostly focusing on uh, the role of private ppp model and uh, how the private sector role has been especially during the lockdown and a uh, few questions relate to the supply chain uh, issues like during lockdown was it disrupted on the drug procurement stuff so can you please uh, elaborate on that and then we will go forward okay <clears throat> thank you for asking this question and uh... i'm really happy to be here uh, where you know any kind of doubts can be clarified at our end regarding the supply chain management uh, during the covid 19 i would say that uh, initially when you know the whole thing started and the news of lockdown came it was basically a kind of a, a shock to everyone that suddenly the services would stop but uh, you know just uh, uh, like uh, on the sunday then when you know the first uh, trial kind of a lockdown was there we sat on monday itself and worked out because it was looking imminent that uh, uh, this uh, is going to happen so uh, we chalked out a strategy we worked up with our supply chain people with talk to our uh, states uh, you know we video consultation and actually the virtual consultations have started nearly 10 days before the actual lockdown 10 to 15 days and all physical meetings in naco and other places have already been stopped and our, our travel travels etc has you know uh, say around 10th of march everything was stopped and uh, we were not allowed to entertain people from outside in the building etc uh, already so we were geared up for you know these things and that time you know we were searching for how to communicate with people and the zoom came uh, and the webex thing came to be known and all those things you know they were already there but um, uh, you know these things were they became kind of more popular at uh, that time and uh, from you know various uh, uh, places the supply chain basically was that people were not able to travel to art center so now now the issue was that how to make medicines reach to their homes or nearby center the nearby center is like care and support center or even some markets because of the confidentiality issue etc people were not interested in receiving medicines at home so that time they were basically uh, delivered the medicine at home also so that was the way the supply chain was managed and uh, another thing that uh, you uh, what was another thing that you asked regarding this or uh, you, you can put up another question yes sir so uh, so the next question is sir is about the uh, viral load and uh, it reads that is there any data for the third 90 for india how many p- uh, people living with hiv have their viral load suppressed and there is a similar question for you sir also that um, uh yeah the ro- about the role of viral load but probably that the sec- the other question will be more relevant for dr kumar asami later on so oh, sir okay. how are we doing on the third 90 sir viral okay. load okay so the, uh, i like to uh, tell about all the three 90s first 90 is the most uh, you know challenging one we are able to reach to 60 the status known is uh, that of 76% only so 24% people do not know their status and that is the biggest challenge people need to know their status more and more people we have to find vulnerable people should get their testing done so more lot more uh, you know kind of uh, information in the field is required uh, for the vulnerable people to get tested that is one second is this uh, out of those who are you know know their status 84% are already put on treatment so that we are you know slightly comfortable not good as one of the speaker said it should be 100% so why it should not be 100% third thing is that uh, regarding the viral load we started uh, since 18 uh, 2018 and uh, we have been able to cover a lot of people nearly 10 lakh uh, viral load tests we have already done more than that rather in fact uh, 10 lakh uh, it's a number must have reached 12 lakhs so uh, we found that uh, if we take you know the do the uh, viral load of all the people on treatment then the suppression is 90% but uh, as we did in for the priority sector initially then the uh, suppression was somewhere around 84% or 80 80 to 84% so but if we do the uh, you know 
viral load of all people who are on treatment, the suppression is coming to 90%. Yes. And, uh, sir, another uh, few important questions are around a new inf infection rate, new HIV infection rate every year in India. Uh, so uh, is it declining fast enough uh, to meet the end dates targets? I would say it is declining definitely. Uh, latest technical estimates of 2019 put this number to 69,000 uh, per year. Uh, which was, uh, you know, which is definitely less than uh, 2017 number, which was somewhere around 87,000. So it is declining, but the, you know, goal as uh, everybody knows by 2030, the SDG goal is to eliminate it or to, you know, end AIDS uh, as a public threat. Our uh, idea is that uh, the number should not be more than 10,000. So to reach that number, still a long way to go. And we have to, you know, uh, make more of us. The business as usual will not do and we'll have to definitely come together or come out with different strategies and innovations as Kumara Swami was saying, whether it in, is in the drugs form, whether it is in the testing, whether it is in the prevention, somebody named PrEP also. So we have to, you know, multiple strategies, whichever are available, all strategies need to be put together to get the good result so that new infections are prevented. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Dr. Goel. Uh, perhaps now we will go to Dr. Kumara Sami. Dr. Kumara Sami, there is uh, the questions around the viral load, and uh, you have been a big advocate for viral load since so many years in pushing agencies to do more on the viral load uh, for uh, better monitoring of HIV treatment. So, uh, Dr. Kumara Sami, do you think, uh, given the COVID-19 scenario, where uh, you know? Uh, the rollout of new technologies has been accelerated and uh, so do you think that, that like uh, you will see more uptake of viral load like will we do better on 90 we heard the government uh, perspective and uh, what about yours and uh, the other question is similar to prep like uh, prep was uh, endorsed in 2012 July by FDA and now it is 2020. So we, uh, but COVID-19 has surely taught the governments that, uh, you know, we, we, we really need to do much better in rolling out the technology and the delay between when the technology has become available and, uh, and when they become, when they translate into public health impact should not be there. So, uh, so how do you, so sir, on viral load and PrEP, Dr. Kumara San, over to you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Bobby, for asking this question, particularly on viral load. You know, I've been advocating for the last one and a half decade to implement widely, even in the poorest nations. Now, here we are treating a viral disease, right? And that to be a chronic viral disease. And you're putting so much of such uh, toxic drugs. So unless you know their uh, virus level, you never know that those drugs are working. So you might be unnecessarily giving those drugs and causing a lot of side effects, the drugs are not working, as well as wasting somebody's resources, either somebody's personal resource or the taxpayer's money or some donor's money. You know, you've been doing that. So for all these reasons, you need to know the viral load so that are you giving the right treatment to them? Now, today we have first line drugs available, second line and third line and future, uh, you know, other line of therapies will be available, not only in the private sector, but also in our national program through the NACO program, we have all those available. Unless you know the viral load, you will not do the good justice to the patient. And also one other thing, we need to know the viral load. I have said this many times in different forums. You will not be able to do a good counseling to our patients. So if you know their viral load, hey, it's been suppressed, you tell them, hey, you're doing well, you're taking the drug. It's a big boon to them. Then they'll continuously take the drugs very religiously and honestly. So if their virus load is high, Rather than blaming them, you can do a very nice counseling on them, say that why your viral load should be suppressed and by pointing out this, and next time it is suppressed, they'll be further being excited to take this in a very, you know, you know very honestly. This is something what we have seen, you know, in our own clinics and uh, through this, we push this with all of our uh, um, public health programs. I'm very glad that now NACO has implemented this in the last one and a half years. They have been, uh, you know, collecting samples even from the farthest place, shipping to the central labs. It's possible and feasible, but it will take a time because in India, you know, our country is so huge and far wide and we have mountains and, uh, you know, oceans and floods and all types of seasons here. So I think it takes time, but unless you implement widely, I, I don't think we'll be achieve any of those goals. Another thing very importantly about the viral load, you asked a question. 
today we talk about treatment as prevention ending hiv aids epidemic right if we can suppress everyone who have got hiv with antiretroviral drugs and make sure that they are taking these drugs and the virus is suppressed we have conquered this virus in terms of transmission so i think viral load is very important today because of the technology not very easily widely available but now lot of point of care diagnostics are available cheaper ones are available i think the next couple of years there are several such technologies available i'm very confident that everyone will have access to you know viral load today we are doing every year probably when these are all available at our doorstep we may do more often to know like our blood sugar to know that uh, you know they are all virologically suppressed to make sure that everyone are suppressed so that we can end hiv aids epidemic in this country thank and you dr parker question on the prep and we have these oral tablets available as tenofovir and lamivudine or tenofovir and emtricitabine uh, which is currently been approved for use by the who but again these medications every day they have to take it and also they have to take it a couple of days before they start this unprotected act and continue even after this act so in a real life situation many times it might be difficult so for that uh, now we have new uh, injectable long acting injectables are available it's been very recently shown in a clinical trial across the globe in the a key population as well as in women in two different large studies that it works much better than the oral prep and now in another couple of months time hopefully it might be you know approved by the uh, regulators in the developed world and as well as might be in the developing countries then this will be a big boon you know to our community for preventing transmission i'm very optimistic this should be available yeah thank you dr kumar sami and a quick uh, question on implants uh, how soon will they be available yeah. Yeah. So these are all signs you know so uh, we never believed that one day we have first line third line second line and third line drugs will be available in india viral load will be available so i think now implants are still under early research so even some of the common drugs like tenofovir been developed as an implant so it's not only for prevention but also for treatment but still in the early phase of science so i think once uh, available this will be a huge uh, uh, boon to our both our patients as treatment and as well as for prevention so that it just can be implement, implanted and even they forget for next six months uh, you know these drugs will you know help them but it has got a lot of other negative things also if they develop a side effect immediately they have to rush to the you know those centers to remove the implants out so that they don't develop a side effect of that medication so a lot of pros but on the other hand there is cons we need to work on so that everyone are uniformly benefited right thank you thank you thank you dr kumarasamy and uh, there are few questions on the prevention of mother to child transmission of hiv dr prakash bora probably you referred to that so maybe you can take that uh, has the lockdown uh, you know pushed us back on the progress india was making towards eliminating parent to child transmission of hiv and uh, maybe dr nareesh goel also can chip in dr prakash bora and dr nareesh goel on the uh, on how are we doing on uh, eliminating parent to child transmission of hiv by by the end of 2020 which is like next 31 32 days prakash unmute unmute yourself prakash prakash unmute prakash please unmute yourself and then speak unmute prakash please unmute yourself prakash Dr. Gilada, maybe you can take it just in the interest of time. Okay, all right, he's here. Dr. Prakash Bora, yes. Yeah, I I feel that the services were going on even in lockdown, and the mother to child transmission was taken care of. So I don't think there was any problem. Okay, regarding this, you know, mother to child transmission, you rightly said that uh, you know the target was by 2020 we have to eliminate, and we are not there. Definitely, the COVID-19 has. Uh, pushed us back regarding the testings you know the people were <clears throat> earlier you know we were able to do the testings very uh, uh, freely while uh, during this period people were afraid to travel down and come down our houses so this year the, our testing whether it is in the pregnant women or general even general clients has uh, gone down a lot and uh, that will definitely uh, impact our uh, you know this <clears throat> target 
uh, as far as uh, you know last year till last year i will, would like to say that we were able to test nearly 2.4 crore uh, pregnant women in a year and uh, the target you know overall is around 2.8 crore only so we are almost there the number and the, the you know a time when we are able to test all these women or even 90% of the target women because some of the states are showing that once we are able to reach them then the treatment uh, we are able to start early and once we are able to start treatment early the chances of transmission and now with the you know this doltagravir based regimens it will be all the more <coughs> important to note how fast the viral load reduction happens and that which will be finally be responsible for uh, non transmission of infection from mother to baby so our eid testing has been strengthened uh, the turnaround time which was uh, you know happen happening earlier for the infant testing that has also improved but overall transmission is still happening in some of the states you know it's some of those states we already achieved it but you know we discussed this with who they want to you know declare it for country we wanted to do a sub national kind of a elimination thing for some states because where we know that the targets have been achieved we can declare those states but uh, because you know who says it should be done nationally so we are at that stage some of the states northern states are still having not having testing to the extent that we want so they there you know we are on this uh, mother to child elimination okay thank you dr goel while we have you uh, sir there is another question of, from on latent tuberculosis infection and prevent and provision of uh, the ltbi treatment for people living with hiv which has been there since several years in the napco pro and uh, ncp2 so sir how are we doing on that as every single case of active tb disease comes from the latent tb pool and as we all know that people living with hiv are at a high yeah. risk for tuberculosis this is another important area which we have been able to sort out uh, in last 2 to 3 years a lot a strategy was made for providing tpt to all those who are eligible uh, i mean uh, who are not having active tb infection so uh, to initially for 6 months in the you know I, uh, ipt isoniazide prevention therapy along with the pyridoxine we give initially there were issues of procurement of pyridoxine so sometimes inhs was there pyridoxine was not there but now the drug procurement issues have been resolved the logistics and the coordination with the tb division issues have been resolved and all over india we are able to give this medicine as far as the logistics and the availability of medicine is concerned but yes what is being seen is still is there some kind of an educational need so that people once they start also complete the treatment because the completion rates are still not very good uh, to that extent that they should be happening so we need to you know Uh, make people more educated that once you start this ipt is also something like you know you have to definitely take every day for 6 months so there we need to work a little bit more thank you thank you dr goel dr raman ganga khetkar uh, welcome sir it was great to see you after a while and thanks a lot for your insights sir you mentioned a lot about community uh, role of communities and uh, which is absolutely so true and is also true during the lockdown and how people living with hiv stepped up to ensure uh, the uninterrupted supplies of uh, life saving art so, uh, sir but also during the lockdown uh, there is evidence that the violence against women went up there is evidence that sex work Uh, were facing a lot of uh, other kind of travails and challenges uh, lgbtiq plus communities were facing lot of challenges which are and these are also the key populations for hiv so uh, so do you think uh, during the pandemic like uh, uh, maybe uh, you know in terms of hiv and also in terms of covid 19 uh, uh, are there some learning lessons uh, which in terms of community engagement it it was sad <clears throat> that such things happen there is no doubt that these things happen but it also points to one lacuny that one question which everybody should ask to oneself have i in, uh, empowered my community sufficiently we are currently you no know, we tend to focus on diseases however have we ever ever focused more on responsible behaviors 
no by, unless you look at responsible behaviors which is actually an antecedent cause of diseases we will never be able to reach where we would like to no if you want if we just say that we would like to look at diseases as an outcome things will not be the same no unless i look at behavioral antecedents that these are also products of knowledge practices and perhaps you know some things which will happen as social collectivization process and these can still be achievable but i think we are far behind for that goal because for us the priorities continue to remain as diseases and therefore such problems are likely to crop up thank you so much dr ganga khetkar and thanks a lot for your great work also in the covid response when you were at icmr we were reading you almost daily during the your tenure so and uh, uh, we we move, move on to dr ruby bansal dr ruby bansal you mentioned about test and treat so uh, did, uh, was there a decline in the in new diagnosis of new hiv infections during lockdown and uh, did it also mean that there were less number of people who were initiated on art during the lockdown period uh, i think uh, we don't have the actual data available uh, about the like uh, how the new infections in the lockdown happen and what is the what was the like uh, outcome but as such uh, i can share only my experience uh, i um, got the like uh, in, in this 8 uh, 9 months approximately uh, 15 to 20 new patients who uh, came uh, for the treatment and uh, definitely uh, so even uh, i mean uh, for the prep also to get the pep for the pep even like my my inhibition was how in the during the lockdown and in the uh, covid era how they are just getting exposed even they are going to the some uh, unknown sources to the uh, not a like uh, official brothers or the commercial sex worker but they are going here and there so this is definitely as dr ganga ganga khetkar said it's a responsibility it's a responsibility of uh, correct behavior which everybody has to understand so and the same is uh, how the like uh, uh, hiv is transmitting the same is uh, even covid is transmitting like in the covid time we are uh, scared of uh, meeting even our own uh, own family so we are not just uh, uh, like uh, even uh, going in that way but the public is uh, people are not uh, showing that responsibility same it was for the hiv and same is for the covid thank you so much uh, dr ruby and uh, dr yeah. milind burushundi you uh, there is a question for you on uh, i think this question reminds me of the old uh, you know slogan of it probably came from the hiv movement maybe from other disease movement but definitely very prominent in hiv movement know your epidemic so uh, so yes it is so true that people living with uh, hiv may not be knowing their status today and also people with covid in could could be me also maybe in wait i don't know my status for uh, covid uh, because you know we don't get tested like every 72 hours or something like that so so what can be more done to uh, ensure that people know their epidemic basically about on the first HIV night doctor bill so it's about hiv and not about the covid yep about actually it is about both yeah. but you can speak yeah but it's yeah. still still uh, we we had a slogan of uh, getting down to zero then test yourself and we had all photographs of the people who that who have tested themselves and everything we have done so far what today requires is not the uh, we always talk of the behavior versus community so what is important is the change in the behavior so behavioral pattern and see anything that we do it is our action and it is in our hand and the things which we cannot do is our, our destiny so basically everybody till he thinks that he himself is prone or he has had a specific sexual behavior or any other exposure and he thinks so the question drops down to a person rather than a community initially we used to targeted intervention for the community so we had ti projects for the truckers and uh, uh, fsw msw and everybody 
but that is not going to help us out because this is the individual behavior it is going to determine whether he is going to hiv positive or negative i will tell you uh, uh, during the covid season definitely we had a drastic drop in the testing those people who were there who were who had uh, uh, the unsafe sex they didn't find a lab because the labs were full either doing covid or not doing nothing so there was definite decrease in that and uh, as far as uh, the number of patient being uh, the number of individuals being tested we have to focus on the adolescent now see if you see the pattern of increase in the cases or decrease in the cases the epidemic is, in, is it is it is definitely going down but if you see the age group of 15 to 24 this slight increase in the numbers and where now if you want to go in for a targeted intervention it should be for the adolescents and if we can target them and if you can uh, tell them about the self testing voluntarily that will be a better option in knowing the status of the individuals uh bobby can i just uh, uh, take one pass to ruby as well sure, as sure. the delivery of uh, delivering the medicines and the role of community i just want to tell you about the cbo for the fsw uh, as well as the lgbtqi that we have collected the donation through the cbo and we have even given ration as well as some financial help to the cbo and that is a really a good model and where we had definitely uh, we, we had definitely Uh, we have achieved having uh, doing something for the lgbt as well as trans the tgs based specifically as well as the fsw so this model has worked here and i am really thankful to sarthi <laughs> which is one of the best cbo work they are doing in nagpur well wow, thank you so much for sharing that dr milin uh, dr naresh goel there is a question for you from uh, from across our borders dr jyoti has asked that does naco see their finances being reduced in the forthcoming future and we also uh, have this concern that not only hiv program needs to be fully funded but of course the health all health program need to be fully funded but in these covid times uh, is this concern true <clears throat> i don't think this concern is true as far as uh, naco funding is concerned till now we have not been asked to for uh, uh you know cut off and even a single penny in fact uh, uh, this uh, you know 15th finance commission which is uh, you know presenting its report has recommended that uh, and this recommendation is not new of course the recommendations has been that uh, public health expenditure uh, is very low uh, that of gdp it is only around 1% and lingering on that 1% for years together it should be 2.5% so by 2024 they want it to be uh, 2.5% which is a huge sum if the you know uh, present funding becomes 2.5 times then definitely this is a huge funding and health sector what our prime minister is also repeatedly saying we will not reduce so uh, i don't think that there is uh, going to be any reduction as far as health sector is concerned particularly naco in last 2 3 years we have been able to go- get whatever we wanted in form of funding so uh, uh, what will happen tomorrow nobody can say uh, but as of now what we see that funding is uh, is no issue as far as program running is concerned whether it is in the uh, you know prevention area or whether it is in the treatment area okay So thank you dr nareesh goel and we do really hope that the hiv program remains fully funded and its funding goes up uh, uh, just to ensure that all hiv services are on track uh, there is a question from uh, s murugan that do you think that art used for hiv uh, any effect on covid 19 especially drugs like boosted lupinavir or tenofovir with e uh, mitricitabine so any one of you can take it please kumara sami will be better i think uh, yes so okay, dr kumara sir we, we discuss this in our technical resource group also and okay. uh, you know <clears throat> this uh, 
there is uh, no impact. In fact, even on those who are on lopinavir, ritonavir, etc., there seems to be equal chances of getting COVID-19. Anyway, Kumara Sami to say more. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, I think the quick answer is no. We don't have any proof that any of the currently available antiretroviral drugs either prevents COVID or uh, treats COVID. You know, there are initial speculation that the protease inhibitors, particularly lopinavir, and also tenofovir can have some effect on COVID, either for treatment or prevention. But now it's proved that, you know, it's not been working. Um, uh, I just recently wrote a, a review article which got published in Journal of Viral Eradication, you know, reviewing all those published across the globe on people uh, uh, who are living with HIV, who had acquired COVID, and analyzing all their antiretroviral drugs, uh, what they have been taking, not only in India, but also in other countries. Also, from our own cohort here in Chennai, now we have almost 80 patients who have been HIV positive with COVID. Out of those 78 who are on various antiretroviral drugs, but we also analyzed and we found that they were on various antiretroviral drugs, starting from tenofovir, AZT, some on efavirenz and lopinavir, doltegravir, darinavir, and all those. So I think they all had acquired COVID. So that means uh, there is no concrete effect on prevention. And one good thing is what we have seen is uh, whether uh, this has caught on treatment. So people who are taking antiretroviral drugs, if their viral load is suppressed and good CD4, their disease progression with COVID is same like people who don't have HIV. So that means if their immunity is good, they do very well. So we can't assume that they, because of the antiretroviral drugs, their COVID, uh, the virus is under control. No, we won't say that. Just because of their immunity is good, you know, they have been doing well. So again, a lot of research happening. Now, whether uh, some of those current antiretroviral drugs can be a little repurposed or fine-tuned because both are RNA virus in a similar mechanism action, whether it can be tuned towards both for treatment as well as cure. And one such drugs under uh, evaluation is a drug which we are using for hepatitis C, a drug called Baclodesivir. So currently it has got shown some effect from some of those trials. Now we have been carrying out a large clinical trial, large multi-site study using this drug in COVID uh, infected people, whether it has got any action against the current standard of care. So I think we need to wait for more results on this. Thank you so much, Dr. Kumara Sami. Any last question, if any one of you have, please do let us know uh, because we are already, you know, way over time. We were supposed to finish like at least 20 minutes before. Uh, meantime, Dr. Gilada, Dr. Mirish Kuel, or any other uh, people who are on the panel who have any final words before we close. Bobby, Bobby was asking the question. Doc, yes, Dr. Rajiv Jirajani. Yes, you yeah. have your hand. Please make a comment, which I think Dr. Goel is quite familiar with. That I am happy that uh, Dr. Kumar Swami, Dr. Ganga Khedkar, and Dr. Million made a very important point that the shared responsibility is not only for that, for only doctors in variety of different specialties, it's the responsibility of the community. And Dr. Goel and I remember having done uh, work together on what we call uh, SBCC, which is a social behavioral change communications. I'm sure some of you have heard about this particular. What I feel is that the whole model needs to look at the whole the health issue more on a public health uh, program systems rather than uh, only the medical activities or virology studies or bacterial studies. It has to be community involvement into the system. And there was a program that was designed earlier. Dr. Goel was very much uh, helpful and responsible for that, but it did not come into the national level program. Uh, Dr. Goel can comment on that. I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Jirajani. Uh, this is regarding, you know, the whole concept. Uh, I think it is the Dr. Ganga Ketkar also brought. Uh, and uh, as we know, earlier we used to just have uh, IEC, then it was BCC, Behavior Change Communication, and now uh, more and more uh, talk. Uh, and the real, uh, reality is that it has to be social and behavior social, uh, change communication. So society needs to be involved. Unless until people around in the society, individual changing behavior of an individual sometimes will not sustain unless the society also 
changes the behavior and there we come you know with the concept of uh, stigma and discrimination if the stigma and discrimination remains in the society then probably the you know uh, person will hesitate to go for you know further testing and even being diagnosed like you know even in our families we hear um, i'm not getting my test done methoni test kara raha mujhe diabetes nikal aayi to problem hogi i mean that's not for the stigma purpose but that's for the fear of you know then taking treatment and here it is a fear of even being ostracized and you know socially uh, stigmatized and um, discriminated so for that we are doing a lot recently our guidelines are almost developed on social stigma for implementation throughout the country the act already came in 2017 is also been you know the states are making their rules and uh, it's, it's a one big step forward in uh, removing the discrimination so societal issues and the behavioral issues of individual and society both are very very important and as uh, over a period of time with our targeted interventions the communities that are in touch with us whether it is female sex worker or you know msms or <coughs> transgenders have you know improved their practices a lot but there is a lot of virtual population now and there is a lot of people who are still hidden and are not coming forth with so we have to reach them somehow so that is a challenge that's a big challenge i agree and we have to basically uh, do something as i earlier said uh, not not business as usual but through some of our innovative approaches we have to reach them thank you a question in chat box from shubha ji uh, shubha shukla that uh, we are delayed in starting the short course for uh, ltbi that is latent tb infection uh, where are we and actually speaking i am also on that committee ltbi committee it is a 3 hp that is a 3 months inh and repopentin once a week only 12 doses against 6 month of inh uh, which reduces toxicity and a lot of doses are less but till today it has not happened and i am requesting dr goel to take up this issue with the central tb division because it is for the benefit of hiv patients uh, for preventing tuberculosis and uh, uh, in next 3 months or 4 months and uh, uh, tb day is going to come 24th of march so mm-hmm. i think before that tb day we should be able to launch that 3 hp if that can be done that will be a great uh, achievement for today's meeting thank you i can assure you if it has been passed and approved by that uh, you know ltba committee then uh, there won't be any issue in uh, getting it implemented but if it is still in the draft stage the you know approvals are not there then it, it may take some more time i'll get back on to you on that i'm not you know right now fully conversant where we are on that so uh, give me some time thank you so much dr gilada and dr gohil for uh, this very promising uh, uh, you know hope that uh, we will have better technologies for addressing the latent tb pool to uh, any final word dr gilada as you are the longest serving hiv expert in the country now and uh, uh, so you definitely get to uh, get to have the last word here i dr. think gilada before we close uh, we have seen hiv for more than three decades we never realized that we would be alive to see this kind of development in hiv and we thought of eradicating hiv uh, but it has been a little bit delayed but still uh, is not into it and we should keep on fighting keep on struggling the government is with us uh, we would uh, the covid will go away or maybe within a year or two when all are vaccinated hiv is not going to go away hiv is going to stay uh, and therefore uh, hiv program cannot be overshadowed by any other program maybe for a different moment moment it can be so we still have a hope and uh, i think this world aids day uh, we will continue that kind of hope and i'm really glad that we could implement this uh, program or this uh, press briefing just within less than 24 hours so this is a great achievement of this kind of uh, virtual meetings uh, in physical meeting it was that it was not possible uh, there are some gains out of this virtual world uh, thank you very much uh, one and all for supporting for cooperating for putting your point of view uh, we wanted all of you to just speak two to three minutes and put succinct views and everybody spoke very well and put a lot of uh, nice uh, uh, views and this is now job for shobha and bobby to um, uh, put it in words again circulate Uh, it will be available on zoom uh, it will be available on youtube as well as uh, facebook 
and uh, we will continue to uh, interact amongst ourselves thank you very much i i would request dr goel to sum up the meeting because he is my co chair uh thank you dr gilad and uh, thank you everyone uh, who is uh, present there um, this was a great uh, opportunity to talk and listen listen more and talk less because you know i definitely would like to say that i am wiser after this meeting i know many more things that uh, we need to do uh, though we are doing a lot but uh, of course we need to do a lot more and with that uh, assurance and commitment that we will definitely do a lot more i take your leave thank you very much for this thank you thank you thank you, thank you so thank much you. sir thank you everyone thank you bye, bye. bye everyone stay safe hosting it okay